Okay guys, check this out. I can put some math into my text box here and I can click OK and get the result. That's pretty cool and everything. But wait a minute, what is this code doing in a table over here? And I can run that code too. Check out these results. I can run code or evaluate expressions at will here. Now this seems pretty crazy, but this is the eval function. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thanks for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist and we're gonna take a look at the lowly eval function, which is gonna give us some really neat results when we use it superficially on a form, but it's gonna take us down a rabbit hole, uh, which is gonna expose all kinds of really cool stuff and actually is kind of considered the dark arts of the VBA programming world. Now, I don't mean to scare you at all, but make sure that you use this function with caution but if you use it the right way, it can do a lot of things for you. Let's get to it. Need to automate time collection across your entire team? Make sure to check out my time collection solution. The link is in the description. Okay, so those of you who are programming VBA, you're going to love this episode because uh, the eval function is really, really cool. Uh, you can see here I've got a access database it's a blank database and I'm just going to the create ribbon there and I'm gonna make a new form design and then I'm gonna go to the controls and I'm gonna drop a button onto our form and with this button we're going to get started with our programming now if you get the wizard popping up there you can click cancel because we're gonna do this manually and I'm just gonna put this somewhere on the form I guess I'll just leave it right there we're gonna have a couple of text boxes as well, uh, but for now we've got our button, and so I'm gonna click on the button. You can right click and go to properties, or if the property sheet is already open, you can use it on the right hand side here. And I'm gonna to go to the other tab, and I'm gonna add a name that makes sense for our programming, uh, CMD eval, and then I'll add a caption, which is what shows on the top of the button there, and I'll just say evaluate and this is going to give us a place to launch some code so we're going to have an event that is going to launch code and that event is on the event tab and the event is on click so that means when you click this button do some stuff we're going to click on the ellipsis there click on the code builder and then go ok and that's going to give us our starting point into visual basic for today and this is where we want to get started. For our most basic example today, I'm just going to make a single variable. We'll call it return variable uh, with a variant in front of it because we're not going to put a type on it and that will default to the variant data type. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the eval function. Now the eval function is very straightforward. You can just use eval and then anything inside of the brackets is going to be evaluated by your program. So in this case I'll say a var at val is equal to eval 2 plus 5 and then we will put a message box pop up uh, for us to view the result of that. And so very simple uh, what we'll do is we're gonna uh, run this eval function just to demonstrate what it looks like. And so we can we can take a look at that. We'll hit save, uh, control S in this case, and then I'm going to uh, use uh, form eval as the name of the form. And so now we've got a form with a button, and that button has got a click event. And then every time it's clicked, it's going to use this variable here, and it's going to load 2 plus 5 as an expression in this case. And then we're going to show that result in our message box. Very, very simple. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go and we're going to go to the form view for our new form and our button should give us 2 plus 5. And there we go. So we clicked it and it gives us 7. And so you can see that the evaluation uh, function or eval function has taken what we gave it. In this case it was math and it says I want to evaluate that and it does. And so uh, what we can do is now we can expand what we're looking at and we can add another control and we're going to add a text box this time. So we've just demonstrated how we can do a very simple, you know, eval function with some math in it. 
But that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the eval function. And so we'll drop this uh, text box onto our form here so that now we have uh, a way of entering data uh, into our application here. And so I'll give the label a value there. So I'll, I'll say evaluate this and then our uh, text box is below and you can see that it is an unbound text box which means it's not connected to any record sets or data or anything. It's just a text box on a form and we'll go to the other tab on the property sheet and give it a name txt evaluate and then I'll save it and then uh, we will be good to go for that. Now we can click on our uh, on our evaluate button again and we can go to the event and click the ellipsis again and it'll take us back to where we were working on our little function. Now probably you have the code window minimized already so you can get to it that way as well but there's our 2 plus 5 but maybe we want to evaluate something different and not only that but we want to evaluate something different every time and so we can do that as well with eval function. So now I can say, uh, you know, with my return variable, load that with the evaluated expression or, or whatever I put into me uh, txt evaluate that text box. Now we want to evaluate whatever we put in the text box. And so let's go do that. So I minimize the code window there. Um, I hit control, sa uh, control S for save. And now we can look at our form and now we can do some other stuff. So we can put our math in there and now it's not hard coded in the program. So now we've got uh, an expression that is variable that can be typed in or, you know, produced with code or whatever. And we can put in mathematical expressions in here and it'll give, it will give us the result. And that is very, very powerful. And as you can see here, we can do our math. We did 5 times 20. I can do, I don't know, 70 divided by 2. And I can click Evaluate, and it will give me the answer that I'm looking for in some math equations there. Uh, but what if we wanted to do other stuff? And this is where Eval gets really interesting, because Eval does not just include math. It also includes lots of other things that Microsoft Access does and one of those things is called an expression and other, another thing is called a function uh, that are good examples for our eval function. And so now we can put in uh, things that are also able to be evaluated. Uh, for example, if I want to say Susan goes at and then and then an expression for now, or a function for now, um, I can make that expression evaluate to Susan goes at whatever time. And so that is extremely powerful and it's very dynamic. And that's one of the things about eval that is quite special for Microsoft Access is that um, uh, it is very, very dynamic. Uh, and so uh, that introduces all kinds of opportunities uh, but also challenges. Um, so next we can demonstrate using another text box uh, in order to capture some data and we are going to evaluate an expression again. Uh, last time the expression was a string that included Susan goes to plus a function that was the now function that is all together that's an expression. Uh, and in this one, we're going to use a lookup of a value on a form. In this case, it is this form. Um, so we're going to put in uh, some text into that stuff. And we're going to use uh, some text from this, uh, the evaluate text box as well. And that's going to allow us to make an expression that we can evaluate. So that that allows us to do all kinds of interesting things and make our forms more dynamic. So now I can put in an expression into our TXT evaluate that includes other controls on our forms. Now this would be very, very handy if you had, you know, a control like a text box, uh, but it didn't always represent the same thing depending on the context of what the user is using. So you could change how that control works every time. So here we go, we're going to grab that forms, form, eval, and then txt 
uh, stuff and then we'll put some other value into that stuff and you can see that will evaluate to this stuff and that stuff um, and so you can uh, do all kinds of things with the eval function it's extremely powerful that way um, and so it really it's a bit of a mind bender because once you discover what you can do with it uh, you're gonna sort of explore how you can sort of take your uh, your coding to the next level now that comes with some challenges we will discuss discuss those closer to the end of this video uh, but uh, this is a really great way to show um, how eval works so we've done math we've done some concatenation we've used a built-in function and maybe what we want to do is maybe we want to make our own function um, so you can see that's our our uh, eval click cmd eval click uh, subroutine there and you know we could have other subroutines that we use in our in our program you might have you know a bunch in your program that uh, are subroutines and I'm going to show you how to convert those so that they can also be used from within eval which it sort of increases the, the dynamic nature of it incredibly and so say we had this uh, friends with function so you know uh, we can make a friends with function we're going to put in uh, friend A and we'll put in friend B and then we'll make a string that says these two are friends. A very, very simple example of a function that you might have in your form code already uh, for a particular form or something, or you might have it in another module, but I'm gonna show you how this works when you wanna use it with eval. Um, so what we, what we can do is we'll create our sentence, which is, you know, uh, friend A is friends with friend B. And so there we go, we've got our one string available there. Uh, so we've got a sentence string and then we'll just do a message box uh, with that sentence uh, string in it. And so there we go, we've got uh, you know, our subroutine as friends with and uh, we're gonna put in two different friends and then this will uh, give a message box back saying uh, you know, this, is, this is what it is. Now, to convert it, um, this is where the conversion comes in. So a subroutine usually does things without any return value, and so it'll do. In this case, it gives a message box. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to change the subroutine to a function, um, so that now we're calling a function. Uh, now you can uh, do this lots of different ways, but in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to say the function friends with is equal to our sentence so we've converted our subroutine which which did one thing and we're going to convert that into a uh, into a function that returns a value and of course if it returns a value then it can be evaluated and we can use the eval function with it now our function in that case was inside of our code behind for our form and we're going to cut it from the form code and we're going to the create ribbon and create a new module there and we're just going to paste this into our new module now why do we use a module it's because module functions are available all throughout the program whereas the function that we created or converted there was on our it was in our form code now we want to take that form code out put it into a module so now you can see we have our friends with function and it is in a module and if I go to the window menu there I can go back to the code behind for the form and so that's how you can go back and forth between those two uh, code windows there and so now we can go back to our form and we can type in the name of our function now into our evaluate text box and I can get the sense that many of you are probably seeing where this is going and the light bulbs are probably going off in your head uh, so there's there's our our function and but now we're actually calling code we're actually writing code I can still put in you know one plus one in here and hit evaluate and it'll give two but I can also put in you know a function uh, that we wrote and so that means you can use any function you can use any uh, any expression and the eval function will 
evaluate that and that can be very very handy uh, for us now one of the examples that I will give is we might have a batch function that runs overnight or something like that or maybe you do you have a bunch of functions that need to run uh, in a certain way uh, you know depending on a context and so and the context changes all the time so you might run those from a table or you might run them you know uh, in some other way but the idea is is that the code that we're writing is not in in inside of a module or you know in our form code anymore we're actually calling functions out in the wild here uh, on the fly and we're changing the input values so now I if I create this table I created a table here with an ID and and I've got uh, some code field there um, which we'll put in our expression or our function or whatever we want in there for the eval function to process and so you can see I put 8 divided by 2 in the first row I used our friends with function in the second row I'll put 3 plus 2 in the third row I'll put uh, 1 equals 5 in the fourth row which is kind of like a, a true or false uh, return value and then I'll use our friends with function uh, again in the fifth row here so you can see uh, that fourth row that's an important one because you might have functions that return true or false and evaluating something like 1 equals 5 well that should return a false or a 0 and so now we have code that's in a table and we have code and expressions in a table and now we can you know go ahead and create a button that's going to run all of this stuff um, so in this case this is an example of what might be like a batch procedure or something like that or you might have a a function that does a whole bunch of stuff again you can uh, you know cancel the the wizard that pops up there and then we'll do the same thing we're going to give our button a nice name uh, cmd run all and then we'll just put run all in the uh, in the caption as well and so again what we can do is we'll go to the ellipsis go to the code builder go ok and you can see now we've got another uh, subroutine for cmd run all underscore click and that's going to capture the click event uh, of uh, of our new button and so I'll do the same thing I'll do a return value that's available uh, as a variable here and uh, now what we can do is we can uh, do a little coding now this is coding that uh, opens a table and it's going to loop through each record in the table uh, and then on each record as it passes each record it's going to run the eval, eval function for that so in order to create this procedure uh, what we'll do is we're gonna create the database variable the record set variable and then we're gonna load the database with our current DB and then we'll set RST equal to DB dot open record set there and then we'll we'll close the record set at the end of our procedure and we're going to set that equal to nothing just for cleanup and then we're almost ready to go there and so now what we can do is we can do well what what are we going to do with this record set we're going to loop through it so we'll do a do until rst.eof that's uh, end of file that's the meaning of eof there and then we want to make sure that we move to the next record each time we go through the loop otherwise it will loop indefinitely and your machine will lock up so make sure that you watch out for that if you're coding a similar procedure and then all we're going to do each time we go through our loop you know each time we go on to a new record here we're just going to say our our return value is equal to eval and then I can't remember the name of the of the of the field here there we go some code okay so the some code field uh, is the one we're looking for so we'll go ahead and uh, put that in there so we'll say RST some code um, that evaluate that whatever's in that table in that field on that row 
evaluate it, just do whatever. And that could actually be a batch, uh, which I will talk more about in a minute. Um, it might be some big batch procedure. It might not be a return value specifically. Um, but in this case, what we'll do is we'll go message box, you know, whatever the return value was in our var ret val there, and then we'll create a message information box. It's an OK uh, message box, and then we'll put a title of evaluated on there. So there you go. We've got our return value, uh, and we've got our database that we're going to open, our records that we're going to open, um, and then we've got, uh, you know, set db equal to current db, and then we're going to loop through uh, the record set after we open it there and we're going to evaluate that uh, you know whatever's in that field each time it loops through and so we'll compile that debug compile is very handy that'll show you if you've got any crazy errors happening or typos and now it's pretty much good to go so we can put our other button there and uh, we can go to the uh, save button and then we will go and look at our form view and we can click run all and we'll see what happens so there we go it's opened it's going through the records here the second one was a, a friends function the other ones were math this is a true false one uh, five equals one is is zero evaluates to zero um, and then another friend function and that's exactly what we want to see there that's how the eval function can be very very handy now that is a great example of a function or a subroutine that goes through and gets the evaluated code from a table and we we like that because it's very very flexible it can be used for batch procedures can be used for all those kinds of things and uh, but you might have a bunch of subroutines that you have already in your uh, in your program if you're already programming something uh, for you know for your users and you might have something like this you know uh, sub my big procedure you know that runs some big batch or something like that and you might be wondering you know how do I get that into the eval um, and so uh, the way to do that um, if you have a big procedure like this it does lots of you know does a whole bunch of you know uh, transformations or something uh, is that you can convert it to a function and one of the things that you should do when you convert it to a function of course is you should give it um, a return value and so it's nice it is a nice thing to do to make sure that you have a return value of your function all the way through and so that's what we're gonna do here is we're gonna uh, we're going to make a boolean, you can call it whatever you want, boolean return or whatever. And at the beginning of the function, now that we're converting this sub, we're going to set it to false. And at the end, when everything is processed correctly, you can set it to true. Now I changed it from a sub to a function. You'll notice that it changed it to end function at the end there. And the only other thing you need to do is to make sure that you give, a, give that value back. So we'll say, uh, you know, uh, run big procedure is equal to true or you can return boolean ok uh, or something like that you can also do that um, but that's one way that you can convert your uh, convert your subs so that they can be run with eval and that will make it very very flexible and handy and that's something that you can do in your program now the eval function takes us down the rabbit hole of what's kind of known as dynamic uh, coding or dynamic execution which means you have to be quite careful in how you use it to make sure that other people don't put in their own values to execute instead of yours and so that's something you always have to be careful of uh, when you're making applications in Microsoft Access if you have things that are customer facing or or facing your users, make sure that the eval function or anything that you do with it is tightly hidden in behind and is only known to you and sort of protected that way. Interested in more topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description.